Hello and welcome to Ginger Welsh Allotments. Today I'm going to take you on a tour of the vegetable garden, which is kind of a part two to the fruit garden tour I did um, last time. It's on the same day and the same conditions as last time. We've just had some rain um, the first time in eight to ten weeks. So very, very, very pleased to see the rain and I'll show you how things have not flourished as much with the lack of rain. So there's the fruit section that I went through last time and this sort of wild meadow wilderness area which sprung up by itself has still not had any work done on it because the ground has just been too hard that pulling any weeds out um, you just pull the tops out and the roots stay in so it, the ground has been too concrete to get anything out of and I haven't had the time either and it's been too warm to do work like that so that's all stayed like that my broad beans I had a really good harvest um, again I had to kind of sacrifice the broad beans I took them out probably sooner than normal uh, simply because with the watering issue um, because I have to bring my water over, they were just taking up too much of the water that I was bringing over. Uh, so I harvested everything that was ready and then got, um, got them out. Um, empty load of pots which had my new potatoes in them. Had a lovely harvest of new potatoes as well, which I'm still working my way through. Now, these are artichokes Jerusalem artichokes and they've not done very well because they were over there and they'd fallen on their sides so all the rain we've had um, they didn't get any but thankfully it is drizzling now and I have moved some of the pots um, and, and put these in the place so hopefully they shouldn't fall over now they should be all right and hopefully they'll recover a bit I don't know if I should trim them or not, but um, anyway, that's them. My sprouts look like they're doing okay um, so far. Anyway, this is, I've got another lot of sprouts at the top. Um, but the nasturtiums have all died back in the bottom. Uh, so I really need to get in amongst them. Now this bed, along with the next bed, have got leeks and parsnips in them. And the leeks in this bed are doing really, really well, as are the parsnips. But this bed is a little bit further behind. And it's because I interplanted radish and lettuce. Um, between the rows and the radish both did and I think it blocked the light to the leeks and the parsnips so they haven't done so well and I just wanted to let you know really that if you're into cropping sometimes it doesn't always work out as as you plan so I don't know if I'll intercrop next year I'm hoping that the beds will be in down there and I'll have enough room that I won't need to intercrop but you know as gardeners we always want as much room as we can don't we uh, down here I've planted some rocket which I think is actually doing okay I was expecting it to be dead quite frankly but it's okay and a couple of onions there my red onions have not done very well I'm not sure if I planted them too late and these are purple carrots, which are doing well. I do need to harvest some of them. And my celeriac, well, I'm not sure what to say about the celeriac. It is bulbing up a bit slowly but surely, but the weather's been so warm that they, I just don't think they've had enough bogginess. Over here in this row, I did plant some turnips, but 
I think it was just too warm and the little seedlings baked. There's a tiny cluster there, I think. Um, yeah, I think they just baked in the heat and died and didn't have enough water. Um, my beetroots, probably most of them are ready for harvesting now. We have a mole on this site as well. Every now and again, I keep finding my soil disturbed slightly. And along here, I did plant some spring onions, but not much. Not many of them have come up at all. But again, that's because when I went away, um, my nephew didn't have any water to water anything but the tomatoes and cucumbers, because bless him, he had to bring the water over in a wheelbarrow. Um, so, here's another line of carrots. And they're not doing too bad. They need to come out. These piddly little onions. I don't know what happened to them. They, they didn't do very well either. And this lettuce I just put there because I had excess lettuce. And I suppose it's not doing too bad. This bed of carrots and onions. I was expecting to <clears throat> be pulling the onions out at some point this week. But... With this rain, I think I might leave them in for a bit longer to dry again. But the carrots will be coming out. I'll be taking all of these carrots out today. Um, just so I can see what's going on in the bed. And repurpose this bed for maybe spinach or overwintering broad beans. And again with this bed, this has suffered from me intercropping as well. Because I had a load of lettuces. Um, that bolted. Uh, my neighbour had some lettuce and he gave it to me and I didn't have any room so I thought oh, I'll pop them in between the onions and the carrots and again I think they have stunted the growth. The carrots are not too bad but the onions have not done that great at all. I did have some swedes under here uh, but I think, like the turnips, they've probably died um, from the heat of the sun and, and no watering. This is my one cauliflower and I can see a very small heart forming in the middle and two of my cabbages. Most of the cabbages I think are ready. I have had four cabbages from here. Um, and they've been delicious and I think the rest are now probably ready um, be, and I shall harvest them before they go over anymore um, my broccoli I had away they didn't do that well um, they didn't heart up that much but I did have a couple of broccoli heads so that was um, very pleasing again there's more cabbages here which I'm pretty sure are already and I think I'll probably when this ca these cabbages are done I'll probably overwinter my onions along here I think I'll give overwintering onions another go now this section here you've probably not seen before because I don't think I had it go in when I last did my vlog so I'll take you through it and show you what I've got I think uh, the courgettes for you, but I think it was only the one plant I had. Um, as you can see, I've now got a marrow there. That's just grown in the eight days I was away. This courgette plant is a golden scallop. And I haven't had anything from there yet, but I can see fruits beginning to form at the back of um of the flower heads and this one i've got two huge pumpkin kind of ones around here that's not meant to be that size so i do need to harvest that today if i do nothing else i need to harvest these big massive courgettes the rest of this bed consists of cucumbers, peppers, and on the other side, 
I did have some silver skin onions, which are the really small sort of pool-like onions. But I don't know if they've survived with the lack of water. And I've got a couple of French bean plants, which are just beginning to produce. There was nothing on these when I went on holiday, but I'm pleased that there's something on them now. Um, my cucumbers, I've got a lot of harvesting to do on these cucumbers because they're getting far too big. Um, they're not meant to be that thick or that long. Um, I've got six cucumber plants and they are gherkins down there, three gherkin plants. If we just come around this side, I can show you the other dwarf French bean um, plants I've got on the go. And if I'm not mistaken, I've got a couple of peppers growing there. I think those peppers are actually doing a bit better than the, uh, the ones in my greenhouse, which have grown lovely, but they're just not ripening, they're not turning red. So as I was saying, I did plant some onions, but it doesn't look like many of them have survived, which is a bit annoying because it was quite a long task planting out those little onions, but there we are, never mind. In this next bed, we have some leeks, parsnips. I did plant some carrots down here. Um, I can see one or two have come up, but again, lack of rain and burning sun has just acted them. And, but down here, I do have some salsify, which I've not grown before and I've not even tried. I just had a free packet, so I've planted them. And I think they're growing all right. Um, that's one, all that bushiness is just one plant. So hopefully we'll have a taste of what salsify is like. Next to the compost bins, I planted a pumpkin, which is doing very well. I've got three set there. Um, I think I'll wait for a fourth and then I'll probably take off the leader because I think four big pumpkins is enough. Tiny amount of sweet corn this year, um, which I've, as you can see hasn't really got away either. Um, but I had a bit of trouble with my sweet corn germination and then when they did germinate the ground wasn't clear for ages so everything has been held back a bit this year. So I don't expect miracles. Um, anything we get is always a bonus. Again, this is a huge squash bed. Um, uh, and I, I've tried to water these as much as I can. Uh, I got some big, big pumpkins coming under there. Some are even beginning to turn orange now. Um, so we should have a lot of pumpkins to carve for Halloween. And I'm very excited with this one here that I've grown up because this is Turk's turban. This one down here has gone orange. I've always been fascinated by these. I just find the colours so vibrant, so sort of delicious looking. Um, but I'm really pleased these seem to have set quite well. There's a couple down here now. Um, I do need to dig out some tiles from inside my shed to put the ones that are on the floor on as well as the, the pumpkins over there they need to go on tiles too just to stop them rotting and this one these this is butternut squash now these haven't climbed up and i'm beginning to think maybe they weren't a variety that didn't climb very high um, and i know i've got a couple of butternut squashes set down here uh, uh, review, please. So there are a couple, and there's one in there. So that if I hadn't, there, there are some forming. 
so they are doing well anyway as you can see the pathway is getting a bit overgrown and I don't really know where to begin with um, sorting through that here I've got my tomatoes these are mamande or mamand and down the bottom are roma which are plum tomatoes and just behind this fence which I, I put in to stop the wind from bashing the celery is as I just mentioned celery which has grown much better than it did last year but I don't think it's going to be um, resembling the stuff you buy in the shops as in you know the long thin stems I think it's going to be a bit like last year where I ended up putting a lot of it in soups and uh, it was quite a tedious process but up here we've got purple sprouting broccoli then some kale two different kinds of kale um, this one was planted earlier than the others and it's taken off again everything got white fly like last year and the rest are sprouts and I've just intercropped some lettuce down the middle which some of it's beginning to bolt but um, it might be all right if I get in there and take off some of the outer leaves it might be okay as I cut and come again and my balotti beans these are eventually getting away just need to trim out those top bits there and I can't see any bean oh yes I lie I lie I lie I lie there's a bean form in there but the blotties I grow um, to leave to dry so I've got some beans dried over the winter and my runners um, they, again they are beginning to get going now like everything else it got held off while I cleared the ground so they didn't go in as soon as they could so they might have been a bit stunted and I didn't plant that many plants this year because well I was inundated with them last year and they got a bit too much so I thought I'll plant less of them no beans growing yet but lots of pretty red flowers forming and they've probably formed quite well with this bit of rain and here are four dwarf bean plants which again not doing great but they are beginning to put something on. I'm pleased to say it's drizzling again. I am quite soaked now because um, it's been quite the gentle drizzle as I've taken you on the tour around um, but I'm not complaining at all not at all at all at all. I do now need to go and harvest those courgettes before I do anything else so um, I'm pleased with how everything is looking. It has grown. I was worried that I was going to come back and all the plants were going to be like, oh, we need water. But I think they probably would have been like that if we hadn't had such a deluge on Friday and yesterday. <sighs> There's nothing like rain, is there? Okay, all I can say about that is lovely job.